Hello, my name's John Ellison and I'm joined by James Mullins, a film guru. Hello, James Mullins here. You know Hello. all about film. Indeed you do. Now, um, I believe um, censorship has been pissing you off recently. Could you tell me a, a bit about it? Well, it's a lot, of, a lot of things really. I mean, censorship, you know, it's very, you know, it's a very, it's weird because Britain has always had this sort of attitude of being impressive, stuffy and all that. We've I mean, had the Neonazis scandal that happened way back in the 80s. Police raiding people's home, you know, homes, video stores, people that have sold videos for money, got put in jail because of some scenes that were too explicit and violent, but actually were just over the top gore effects that look kind of cheesy really. You know, there's fuss and nothing really, a lot of ways. Yeah, but I'm worried that we're heading back to that now with a lot of things, especially with outrage culture as it's called, where you say something online or in person, you know, usually online, and not anonymity of the internet and how it leads to people being easily offended. And then you have the overreaction from certain political sides that lead to, you know, uh, one would be an offender over, you know, something a right wing person offends the left wing and vice versa. And I think if we're not responsible about the actions that we take and the consequences, and we let, for lack of a better term, idiots in charge of this thing, it could lead to a lot of social and political censorship. I mean, in terms of film and entertainment, it's funny, you can have violence and swearing and all that, but it's weird how certain considered controversial people get the sack or blacklisted for voicing a certain opinion or the mock to made fall of and that to me is it's very troubling deeply stern. It's just a, a, a depressing precedent for that sort of stuff. And it reminds me a lot of the stuff happened in the eighties and again in the nineties with the Jing Bolger child murder. Mm -hmm. They that with violent videos. They linked a film about a, a supernatural possessed killer doll, the third child body film for that. And apparently some opportunistic MP try to, uh, you know, use that to push more strict, extreme, stricter censorship, and uh, thankfully it was abolished. Broadly enough, the guy who was in charge of BBC at the time, he was so rigid about censorship, and yet even he drew the line, like, no, no, you're banning, you're going to end up banning censoring films that are, like, basically rated PG, which is just ridiculous. Again, I'm worried that now, that's like, you know, especially with the corporate buyouts and all that. Uh, you have another question for me? Um, yeah, um, those uh, videos from the 1980s, they were called Video Nasties, I believe, weren't they? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes they were. Uh, what do you like to know about them? Um, I'm guessing you uh, watched some of those Video Nasties, haven't you? I have. I, I own uh, quite a few of them. I own uh, there's about 72 of them were like, on the list, the section 2 list of 72 movies. Uh, 33 were dropped. Goes for review, and there was 39 that were put on the, that were brought, successfully prosecuted. I've seen, uh, I think I've seen almost more about half of them, at least. Uh, I've seen quite a few of them. I mean, uh, I've watched some of them. They're not. Some of them are. You watch them now, and you, f you think to yourself, well, the majority of them, they're actually just appallingly trash, frankly. I mean, like some of them are like you know horror, cheap horror films with very little violence and gore. It's really the marketing is what set them off. I mean, stuff like Drew Killer, you know, that, that had the you know, image, the gore image, of a video cover of a guy getting his head drilled in. And that's one of the only violent moments in the whole film. The rest of the film is this sort of psychological, like film about this guy allowing Polanski's repulsion when he's going crazier and crazier, stuff like that. I mean, there are films like Cannibal Holocaust, which features actual scenes of animals being killed and mistreated, which I understand. But in the case of that film, and the ethics of which have been much debated, the filmmakers of that film, they used that to uh, create, like what the Blair Witch Project later did, you know, faking, faking the, uh, faking real life footage, making sure that everything's all uh, done as big. So I guess, um, despite the fact that certain films are rated like U or PG or 12, etc, etc, mm -hmm. that there's still, there's still um, some uh, controversy on those films despite those. I imagine so. It, I mean, there was a whole thorough all over Watch It Down, 
the film actually mm -hmm. rated you, but now it's been thanks to a lot of angry parents complaining to Channel 4 and I think the BBSC subsequently, yeah. they're going to recast that as a PG. And for me, the film, I've not seen the film in a while, but the 1978 version of the animated movie, it, the violence is there, but it's no more violent than some films I've seen. I've seen quite a few films, like there's a couple of 1950s westerns in which a hero gets his hand shot or mutilated, hand mutilation, you know, and those rate you. In fact, there's, a, there's even a Doctor Who story from the mid 80s where a guy gets his hands crushed and you see the blood, the blood, that's rate you. Hmm. You know, uh, again, it depends really. I mean, there is a good reason why films with mature subjects are 18 rated dealing with sexuality yeah. and all that. Of course, it, BBFC, I think even now, they're still, they have trouble with sex and violence, but they're a lot more lenient on it than they used to be back in the, back in the day. I mean, they've uh, loosened up a lot of things, stuff that was, uh, in fact, a lot of the onasties, and, you know, quite, most of them now, not all of them, but majority of them now are available and cut, you know, in nice, restored, uncut, and HD remastered, so you can get those. Uh, as I was going to say, uh, the the film for me, there is a there. I'm fine with classification. Like there, are, I think there. Are, I think there are certain things I think children shouldn't watch. You know, without parental supervision, in a weird way. I mean, I feel like you need to show it's all right. But I think there's a responsibility in the home for the people. Really, I mean, uh, again, how many uh, house family households are there in less in the UK together? And I know, I'm sure not every home has a family. It could be like single people, or what, you know. But it's, it depends on who's buying it, really. I mean, there's, there's a. I agree with the classification, but that, that a lot of that was in the wake of the video because they obviously wanted to control the videos, obviously, in the video market and subsequently the DVD Blu ray market. Of course, it's hit it head with the streaming market. I think in the UK, it's like Netflix and mm. or have certificates on them, but that's a whole other thing, really. But it's. Certainly in terms of like home video and cinema releases, it's still more the same really, but it's nice to see, but again, there was a thing recently with the whole, I think it was the whole Me Too uh, photo and controversy over that, you know, sexual violence happened, allegedly you know, accused, happening to real women and of course men as well, but do I believe, you know, films that deal with that subject matter in a, if they're good films and they deal with such abuse, do you think they should inspire, do you think they're going to horribly inspire people? You know, and that's where I think you know, again, I think censorship. It, it's. I think there are ways to use it properly, but I do think it's you can go too far. Uh, David Cronenberg, the great uh, Canadian filmmaker himself, said about censors the like to him the like psychos. They confuse science with reality. Yeah. I think sometimes it's responsibility. You've got to realise what is the context of what's happening. What is it about? You know, why are you doing this? You know, you, you be if you're a person who's got strong moral, who's morally responsible for doing what you're doing, then you know, by all means, you know. But again, I feel like we're it's overreaction with where we are come out critically and you know culturally. It's, it's annoying at this point. You know, it's we need to like maybe stop like take stop with the hot takes and stop and think about what we're what we're doing really. You know, what I mean, you know, online it's a lot of overreaction and overblown responses really. You know, again, that's why I think censorship when you overreact enough time, censorship could be a, as itself an overreaction to something. Again, the nasty is the bulger controversy and you know stuff happened recently online, you know, hate groups, alt right hate groups online and certain people of a certain political spectrum or, you know, can get like, you know, they could maybe be easily offended by stuff. Do you reckon that children are being overprotected by the arts? I believe so in a lot of ways. I feel a part of it, this is a weird thing with me. I, I believe, you know, I said earlier, parents should, you know, should protect kids really, but you know, at the same time, I was a young kid when I was, was in my early teens when I was exposed to horror films and you know, I was scared to death of some of them, but over time it, it taught me, you know, not to be afraid of that, embrace, you know, the other as it were. So I could watch you know, horror films that deal with a lot of like you know, have scary creatures or whatever you know you know and you know there it's not so scary anymore it makes you think forces you to think about it yeah I think I think you know protecting kids too much sometimes that can again it, it's overreactive and repressive and 
again, in a way, conservative, you know, in terms of how... Because I think if you're protecting kids, who are you, who are you protecting them from, really, from the world? Mm -hmm. Understand a kid might process things, and of course there's loads, account endless debates on, like, you know, suppressible images towards kids, you know, if a kid, you know, what would, you know, are kids going to imitate what they're going to watch? And there was, a, you know, there was obviously a Simpsons episode back in the early days that would delve that issue, you know, now that's censorship, and in a way that, that episode took the stance, you know, that Marsh seems to me about the right to be upset, but by going too far, we sanitise something. So I believe art should be, should be able to make what you want to make. But at the same time, Kids, you know, again, it's, it's responsible for the parents. Parents are responsible for what kids, children should watch, and young to watch. That's what they should do, you know. It's their decision, really, you know. And that's what happened with my mother and my little sister, who are older than me, and obviously you exposed me to these sort of films, you know. I mean, it's done me a lot of good. It's done you a lot of good, done a lot of people good. But, you know, I think it, but I do think, you know, if, you know, there are some essences, you know, like there's some, I imagine there's some extreme stuff involving kids and you know, abuse of kids. I do think, yeah, that, there's some, I do think you, you, I think it should be, I think it's, again, it's responsibility towards, you know, who chooses to expose what to kids, really. Because it's educational, there's an educational element to it. Kids can learn what they have to do, and learn about good stuff. Educate them, forms their mind, make them curious, expose them to new types of thinking, which is a great, you know, that DIY self, you know, absorbing, you know, that, that's the right word, you know, the kids, you know, a kid could watch something and might be inf influenced by that, but again, some people would, the, the contractors would say, you know, that could influence, you know, you know, that could lead them to the wrong path, you know, but again, I, it's the parents, you know, parents are the ones, it's all down to parents raising kids, really, and the old Bulger thing, the, the two youngsters that killed Jim Bulger, I mean, that was a, you know, there's a, there was a, you know, there was a car, car car with that, you know, they didn't want to blame the, the kids' upbringing, but it was something to do with the upbringing, you know, no matter how much the media and certain elitist people and just the system try to pass it off as violent videos, no, it's, you know, you know, if, if, if a violent film, I don't know, a five-year-old saw a violent film, I don't know if they could, you know, would, I don't know if would they, I don't know if they react to it, it just seems weird to me, but you always have Disney films, which are very wholesome, really. Oh, yeah. That could that would could that affect them as well? I mean, the old Disney defense, you know, but there's films do have an effect. I mean, there's some truth to that, but again, it, it, it can and it can't really. I mean, so it's, uh, it's I don't know if I've answered the question, done justice to the question posited to me, but you know, but I'm just trying to justify it, you know, what, the best I can read. I think there is, there is, uh, I think there is, I think there are some things you should, I think kids should be, should. Obviously, keep the innocence of children. You know that they should have that. But also, over time, as they like, it depends as well how smart, how educated, how absorbing a child is, like a sponge. If they if they feel like they're in, they're they're all right with exposing them to gradually more adult, mature content, then so then by all means, really. I mean, you know, it's, again, it's building up trust. Really, you know, you're. It's, the act of growing up, really. So I think there's some, I think there's some, uh, there's some things I agree with and some things I disagree with. Uh, that's that's, uh, that's it. Well, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, everybody. Excellent. Don't believe what you read.